Commander, I have an opportunity you'd be foolish to turn down. New Guardian sites have been discovered. The codices at these locations could reveal a great deal more about the Guardian society. I've developed a way to decrypt the data from these Guardian sites, and I'll relay the relevant information back to you as soon as I have it. Although I cannot specify the various combinations of objects and data types required, my decryption software should help decipher the ancient data. The key is using the ancient objects with active obelisks to unlock the data. I've taken the liberty of uploading my decryption key to your ship's systems. Unfortunately, the ancient technology adapts to the cipher after a few weeks, so our task is time critical. Please explore as many ancient sites as you can find. If you find all the data entries, there will be a bonus in it for you. This is very revealing. The data appears to explain why the Thargoid seeded a number of planets with barnacles in what eventually became Guardian space millions of years ago. As we know, Thargoid barnacles are designed to extract resources from a planet and transform them into meta-alloys, an essential ingredient in the creation of Thargoid ships and technologies. The Guardian surmised that for the Thargoids, seeding a planet with barnacles is an important process in preparing an area for occupation. This data details the start of the conflict between the Guardians and the Thargoids. Several thousand years after they seeded planets in Guardian space with barnacles, the Thargoids returned. Of course, they discovered that the planets they had seeded were now occupied by the Guardians. The Thargoids immediately launched an assault, making no effort to communicate with the Guardians. This tallies with the Thargoids' behavior in human space. Ah, this data supports my theory that the Guardians were gifted linguists. At some point after the war with the Thargoids began, the Guardians were forced to make a partial retreat. It seems they were still trying to communicate with the Thargoids and were reluctant to take up arms against them. Eventually, they managed to develop sufficient understanding of the Thargoids' language to communicate, but it did the Guardians little good. The Thargoids were determined to continue hostilities, forcing the Guardians to employ more aggressive means to address the Thargoid threat. The data in this log details the methods used by the Guardians against the Thargoids. At first, they deployed ground troops, but when this proved ineffective, they started to use drones. Autonomous machines that felt no fear, fatigue, or uncertainty. These war machines became highly sophisticated in a relatively short amount of time and were soon able to identify and target anything that utilized Thargoid engineering. Even more remarkably, Thargoid biomechanical technology was engineered to recognize anything of Guardian origin. That explains why, millions of years after the conflict, Thargoid devices still react aggressively to the presence of Guardian technology. This log describes the end of the conflict between the Guardians and Thargoids. It appears the Thargoids entered Guardian space unprepared for a protracted military campaign, and after facing a relentless onslaught from the Guardians' war machines, they were forced to retreat. The log also mentions that the development of the Guardians' war machines created a schism in their society, which may have seeded the civil war that occurred later in their history. This log details the Guardian's development of artificial intelligence. Hmm. 
It appears the Guardians experimented with artificial intelligence prior to the invention of the monolith network. But the creation of the network and the knowledge sharing it facilitated dramatically accelerated the rate of progress. Eventually, the Guardian's experiments bore fruit, resulting in the first fully sentient machines. These constructs were seen as a means to enhance the Guardian's technological mastery and were integrated into various aspects of their society. Neural implants were developed that connected the Guardians with both the constructs and the monolith network in a symbiotic circle. It is truly remarkable. This data describes the motives behind the Second Guardian Civil War, which ultimately led to their demise. The Guardians had a deep veneration of nature, and many of them saw the development of advanced technologies, such as artificial intelligence, as a perversion of the natural order. A schism emerged between the nature-worshipping traditionalists and the technologically-minded progressives. A divide that widened with alarming speed. Efforts were made to diffuse the rising tension, but the traditionalists felt alienated by the rapid rate of change. Artificial intelligence and the development of the monolith network became scapegoats for all manner of social ills, and the traditionalists began to clamor for a return to simpler times. Ultimately, the ideological divergence proved insurmountable. A second civil war erupted, quickly engulfing most of the Guardian star systems. This log reveals more about the sides that fought in the second civil war. In its early stages, the war was fought primarily by soldiers. But within a decade, and after significant loss of life, most of the fighting was conducted remotely. The progressives fought with automated combat machines. These engines of war took various forms, from autonomous drones to vast, lumbering dreadnoughts imbued with limited artificial intelligence. On the other side, the traditionalists relied mostly on biological weapons. They used germ warfare alongside long-range missiles loaded with corrosive enzymes, which could target the enemy's war machines from a great distance. This log outlines the downfall of the traditionalist faction during the Second Guardian Civil War. The main issue was the internecine nature of the conflict, which raged for over 100 years and brought the Guardian civilization to its knees, retarding any further social development. But the challenges facing the traditionalists were exacerbated by the fact that they devoted most of their resources to honoring the dead. From what I can gather, they regarded the departed in much the same way as the primitive cultures of Saul, constructing vast shrines to honor the deceased. As their situation worsened, they became increasingly obsessed with these practices. With so much of their resources dedicated to these rites, it is little wonder that their enemy's war machines were able to overwhelm them. Monitor the Thargoid activity using the... This log concerns the end of the Second Civil War. Remarkably, it seems the artificial intelligences developed during the conflict became fully self-aware at some point and were horrified by the destruction unfolding around them. It's difficult to get a sense of exactly what happened next, as the Guardians were not privy to the Construct's thoughts. But, reading between the lines, I believe the Constructs determined that even if peace was restored, the Guardians would never be able to transcend their violent natures. It is my theory that they decided that the only way to preclude further violence, while giving their own burgeoning society the best possible chance of survival, was to destroy what remained of the Guardian's civilization. By this time, the Constructs had complete control of the Guardian's munitions and automated war machines. 
Their attack, when it came, was swift and merciless. Strategic nuclear and chemical weapon strikes were executed with a precision that only a machine race could accomplish. The few that survived were able to record what had happened, but they soon succumbed to radiation poisoning. The Guardians were utterly destroyed. This log describes the Guardians' weapon technology. It seems they developed electromagnetic projectile weapons early in their modern period, utilizing the same technology they used to launch their first spacecraft. These weapons ionized the path of their target before firing focused bolts of energy along the ionized track. They were crude and unpredictable at first, sometimes resulting in the death of the wielder. But. Once the Guardians learned to regulate the ionization process, they became more stable. This data relates to Guardian Shield technology. Of course, I already knew they had developed extremely effective shields, capable of protecting entire cities and even withstanding orbital bombardment. And I was aware that their shields were effective against both laser weapons and kinetic projectiles. But it is remarkable to consider that this technology was developed millions of years ago, relatively early in the Guardian's evolutionary timeline. This data provides further insights into the Guardian's ship technology. We already know how ecologically conscientious the Guardians were, and of their assiduous avoidance of rockets and fossil fuels. So it isn't surprising to discover that their first spacecraft were fired into space with electromagnetic launchers. Of course, this was an imperfect system that did not allow pilots to adjust their course after launch. Over time, the Guardian starships became much more sophisticated, but their approach to space travel remained rooted in a respect for the natural world, and their interplanetary expansion was fueled by clean nuclear fission and fusion. Their ships could travel at speeds approximating those of our own present-day craft. Unfortunately, the data includes no schematic information, so it seems likely that the details have been lost. It's a shame. I'm sure the Pilots' Federation would have liked to know more about the Guardian spacecraft. This data concerns the automated defense systems found at Guardian sites. You may have already encountered them. The data indicates that these Sentinels date from sometime prior to the Second Guardian Civil War. They are designed to respond aggressively to any unauthorized activity around the ruins. If you are forced to defend yourself, kinetic weaponry would be your best form of attack, since the Sentinels have no shields. Destroying them is, of course, regrettable, but Sentinel weapon parts and wreckage are of considerable value, so the loss is not significant. Remarkable! This log actually contains the blueprints for the Guardian's data terminals. As you know, these terminals were used to store schematics for weapons and other sophisticated technologies. They are linked to energy pylons scattered across Guardian sites by some form of computer program. Of course, this system has been dormant for millennia. But targeting the pylons with an energy weapon will increase the charge within, thus imbuing the data terminal with life. Essentially, we can awaken the system. This log details the construction of the panels found at certain Guardian sites. As I suspected, the panels are made from a unique alloy, manufactured from a metal I have yet to identify. Even more remarkably, the panels appear to incorporate nanobot technology, which activates when in proximity to a foreign body. This explains the faint glow given off by many Guardian materials and structures. This is an extraordinary discovery. 
Humanity has dabbled with nanotechnology, but evidently the Guardian's achievements far surpassed our own. This data relates to the objects we have termed Guardian Relics. These blue crystals are part power source, part computer, part key, and apparently played a central role in Guardian technology. Remarkably, it seems the crystals were grown rather than mined. The log is light on details, but from what I've been able to piece together, each crystal was designed to fulfill a specific purpose within the Guardian's technological network. And, like the panels found at many Guardian sites, the relics incorporate nanobot technology. These records describe ancient Guardian weaponry. It seems the Guardians employed three different designs. An energy-based weapon similar to a railgun, a projectile weapon that fired concentrated plasma, and a weapon that fired charged crystal shards at extreme velocities. These weapons were apparently powered by the crystals we have termed Guardian Relics. And the log describes how the relic generates and distributes energy within the weapon. This is a significant discovery, as it means it might be possible to recreate these weapons, or at least to design our own versions of them. Oh, it's extremely exciting. Ah, this log details the Guardian's faster-than-light technology. It seems their drives produced a far greater jump range than anything humanity has so far developed. Regrettably, however, the data in the log is exceptionally dense, and it could take years, if not decades, to fully understand it. What is clear is that the Guardian's hyperspace technology was very different from our own. This log details the Guardian's power plant and distributor technology. The efficiency of this technology far exceeded anything the human race has yet developed, and the yield was huge in relation to the input required. Unfortunately, the specifics of how this was achieved are not described in the log. But who knows? Perhaps the secrets of the Guardian's energy technology will someday be discovered. This log describes, in general terms, the materials used in Guardian hardware. It's clear that Starship hulls and the Guardian's equivalent of ship modules were made of the same lightweight alloy as the panels found at many Guardian sites. Unfortunately, this alloy incorporates a metal I have yet to identify, which means I will be unable to recreate it. What is clear is that this alloy was both lightweight and highly durable. As for their shield technology, we already noted it was highly sophisticated. Encouragingly, the log describes it in considerable detail. <sighs> Given time, I might be able to use this data to develop some exceptional defensive technology. This log is unusual. It appears to refer to another group of Guardian sites far from the ones we've already discovered. I realize that might sound disappointing, but in fact, this find is extremely important. The log suggests these undiscovered sites might contain blueprints not only for Guardian engines, but for Guardian starships. 
Just think, someday soon we might uncover a Guardian ruin that will allow us to manufacture ships and fighters incorporating Guardian technology. It makes my skin prickle just to think of it. And who knows, maybe you'll be the one to find it. This fascinating log relates to variations in the Guardian's gestural language. As we know, the Guardians shared a single language with only minor regional variations. And even after they colonized other planets, they continued to share a common tongue. But after the start of the Second Civil War, it seems that each side developed its own distinct version of this gestural language. This allowed each faction to communicate in code so as to safeguard information from the enemy. This log gives a fascinating insight into the Guardian's neural implant technology. The Guardians use these implants to connect cerebrally with their AI creations. Unfortunately, the technology was still in its infancy when the Guardians were destroyed. Apparently, the implants created a symbiotic link with the constructs through implantable fibers, which connected the central cortex to a multimodal interface within the construct. Essentially, the Guardians were able to direct their creations with thought alone. At least, until the Construct rebelled. How extraordinary! This log suggests there are many more Guardian sites out there waiting to be uncovered. And I mean hundreds, perhaps even thousands. Unfortunately, some of the data in this record is degraded. If there was a map inside this log, it has been lost. Who knows what remarkable knowledge might be hidden in these alien ruins. The more of the Guardian's extraordinary technology we uncover, the greater the potential impact on our own technology. Locating further Guardian sites could help us take giant steps forward. Okay, from the Guardian sites we've previously investigated, we know that the Guardian's artificially intelligent constructs were responsible for controlling the war machines and other military apparatus, as well as overseeing civilian technology and infrastructure. And we know that these constructs eventually gained sentience and destroyed the Guardians. But it appears it was not the military constructs that made that choice. The constructs developed for civilian utility and those designed for military operation were independent of one another. And it was the non-military constructs that decided to attack the Guardians. The military constructs were opposed to this decision, but somehow the non-military constructs won out, forcing their military counterparts to comply with the attack. What a remarkable discovery. It makes me wonder what happened to these constructs and what they eventually became. Were they destroyed or do they still exist somewhere in the vastness of space? This log details the main applications of Guardian constructs outside the military. It seems that before the Second Civil War, most menial work was performed by constructs. But despite this, the Guardians did not become idle. On the contrary, they devoted themselves to artistic and athletic pursuits. Many Guardians participated in what we would call sporting events, although it seems these events incorporated some ritualistic elements. One cannot help but wonder what would happen if humanity made more use of labor-saving technology. Would we become a more cultured people as the Guardians did? A shame. The long-standing convention against the development of artificial intelligence means we will probably never find out. Well done, Commander. You have my eternal thanks. We could not have decrypted these latest codices without your dedication to this critical mission. If I learn of more Guardian sites in the future, I won't hesitate to contact you. Until next time.